Hello there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. In this video we're going to be talking about the different types of map projections. We'll be going over the advantages and disadvantages for each map projection. So throughout this video, we're going to be talking about the different types of map projections. Now it's going to be important for you not only to be able to identify the different types, but also understand the advantages and disadvantages for them. Now when we're talking about map projections, we're talking about trying to take a three-dimensional sphere, the Earth, and put it on a two-dimensional space. Now we're not going to be getting into developable surfaces in this. This is ways that we project the Earth onto a two-dimensional space, but I have another video that will go into all of that. For more information on that, click the card on the top right. That will go into what's going on with the different developable spaces and how we can actually create these maps. This video though is just going to be focusing on map projections. Now before I get into the different types of map projections, it's going to be important for you to understand the difference between an interrupted map and an uninterrupted map. An interrupted map we're going to see throughout this video. Same thing with an uninterrupted map. An interrupted map is where we've actually taken chunks of the map out. We have removed wedges. The goal of this is to actually try and remove distortion, particularly with our size and our shape and the land masses. Now the one big disadvantage here is then our oceans become a little bit harder to read and we're missing chunks. It's not good for navigation or direction. An uninterrupted map might have more distortion with the shape and the size, but it'll be better for actual distance and direction. And this gets into our biggest problem with maps. It's distortion. Every map we have and every map projection we are going to look at in this video has different problems with distortion. Whether it be the size, the shape, the distance, or the direction. Make sure you remember that. Biggest problem with maps is distortion. Now enough talking about kind of an overview. Let's get into now our first different map projection, which is going to be our Mercator map. Now the Mercator map is in the shape of a rectangle and it excels at direction. It's actually been used a lot as a marine navigation tool and that's because our longitude and latitude create 90 degree angles and this makes it very easy to get from place one to place two or point A to point B. It is very precise when it comes to direction. So it excels there at removing distortion within the direction of the map. However, where it struggles is when it comes to our size and our shape. There's a lot of distortion that occurs in order to preserve direction. And this is why too, Google's used the Mercator map for a very long time. However, recently they've started to change it as you start to zoom out and we'll get into that another time. But where the Mercator map falls short is size. Now, when we get to the poles, the Mercator map actually creates a lot of distortion with size. And this creates some issues. Some people have claimed the Mercator map actually creates a bias, an unintended bias that is, for people who are perceiving the map projection. See, when we look at this map projection, you are going to see that the more developed world, more developed countries are larger, where the less developed countries are smaller. And that's because of the location of them on this map. We see that Africa, for example, here is actually smaller compared to Greenland, when in reality Africa is much larger than Greenland. We could actually take multiple countries and put them inside of Africa. However, when looking at this map projection, we can't see that. Africa does not look as big as other parts of the world, and that's due to the distortion that this map creates. This map can also be classified as a conformal map, a cylindrical map, and also an uninterrupted map. Remember, uninterrupted just means that we're not seeing parts of the map taken out. No wedges have been removed. And that's going to be important for identifying the Mercator map. The next projection is the Goody Homelsen projection. This was created by John Paul Goody. Now, this is a little bit of a different map than what we're used to. It's an interrupted map, and it does a pretty good job of minimizing most of the distortion. We can see here that it does a decent job at maintaining size and making sure that our land masses are not interrupted. However, it does struggle when it comes to being able to present information 
easily for the reader. It's a little bit harder and it definitely struggles with direction, where we have a hard time here being able to use this, especially for any marine time travel, because you're not going to have accurate depiction of the ocean. Other characteristics of this map are that it is a pseudo-cylindrical map. It's also an equal area map and an interrupted map, like I've said before. Lastly, it is also a composite map. What this means is this map has multiple images that are overlaid on top of each other. They're then merged together to create one map, one image. And these are the main things you have to know about this map projection. Our next map is the one that students find most often kind of weird, and that's because it's really different than what we're used to. This map is the fuller projection, and this map does an excellent job at showing and maintaining the size and shape of the land masses. It also does a good job of not interrupting the land masses. However, this map struggles when it comes to the interpretation of what's being shown. See, readers have a harder time with this map, and that's because so many of the things we read with maps are based on the cardinal directions, north, south, west, east, this map does not use those. So it can be difficult to be able to interpret the information from this type of map projection. A couple other characteristics of this map projection are that it is an interrupted map, which you can see as wedges have been removed, and it's also a compromised projection. What this means is it's trying to minimize the distortion by kind of spreading it all around. This then minimizes the amount of distortion for each area of the spots that struggle when it comes to map making. That's again, and that size, shape, distance, and direction. The next projection we're talking about is the Robinson projection. We can see here this projection is almost a full rectangle. However, the corners have been kind of shaved off. This projection is not necessarily minimizing distortion by removing it. Rather, it's minimizing it through spreading the distortion through every aspect of the map. See, shape, size, distance, and direction all have distortion in this map. And that actually is a problem with this map. It creates it where each of these aspects aren't perfect and they all have distortion. However, when looking at the map through the naked eye, we can see visually it looks like there is less distortion occurring. And that's because it's spread out a little bit more. And we could also see that this map is uninterrupted. Our last map projection is the Winkle Triple Projection. Now, a lot of students confuse this with the Robinson Projection. Make sure you focus on the size and also the shape. That'll help you be able to determine which of the map projections you're looking at. The Winkle Triple Projection is going to be more round and is also going to be larger. The Winkle Triple Projection actually excels at showing very minimum distortion when it comes to the land, distance, and direction. And actually where it does struggle is when it comes to the poles. The North and South Poles are going to be distorted. Also our lines of longitude and latitude are also going to be curved in this map projection. Other characteristics of this would be that it is also an uninterrupted map. And those are going to be the main identifying features that you need to be able to pick out a Winkle Triple Projection map. This video was a really quick look at the different types of map projections, and it went over a bunch of different things for each one of them. Hopefully you found some value in this video. If you did, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Also, don't forget to check out my other video that's going to go into the developable surfaces, which will look at how we actually project our three-dimensional sphere onto a two-dimensional object. I'm Mr. Sin, thank you for stopping by, and until next time, I'll see you online.